Hey everyone, we keep getting cut off. Now I think that I know why, because she keeps saying that C word. So I'm gonna ask her not to say the C word anymore for the next time. I will bring you back up, Janice. I think Janice, what happens? You say the C word. You can't say the C word. <laughs> It happens every single time you say it. So don't say the C word. <laughs> now, from where I come from, as in my country, <laughs> that C word could have a couple of other names. Wow. Wow. That is here. Right. So we'll move we'll move on to the next to the next uh, uh the next question. So if you could please just share your G status with us here, that would be actually really great. And for everyone else, the G status means generation. How many generations mm -hmm. have you actually been here in the US? All right. So I told you I came up with with my own <laughs> suggestion, right? Yeah. I call it a Z a zero point one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because my parents were here first, and then my brother and I came here. I have a, okay. I have a brother that was born here, right? So he would be G1. Right. But my child and my brother's children, they are G1. So where do we fit? Okay. Are we G0 or G0.1? <laughs> I, I like, I like um, G0.1, so I do like that answer. So tell us where, where country you're actually from and a little bit about, about you and, and your experience. Okay, so I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, right, in the Caribbean. Yeah, note the red, white, and black, right? Which we love and is beautiful, fashionable, as always. And which are our national colors. Those are the colors of the TNT flag, right? Um, I came here when I was a teenager, 14 years old, and went straight into high school after completing three years of high school in Trinidad because in TNT, um, as in the other parts of the Caribbean, there is an exhibition, mm -hmm. an exam that everyone took. In my days, it was called um, Common Entrance. Mm -hmm. Today, it's called SCA, which is um, a scholastic educational ap application, something like that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. still basically the same um, exam that everyone has to take when they get to the age of 11 and 12 which would then allow them to either go into a high school or continue what we call here primary school. But primary school okay. in the Caribbean is not the same as the education levels are not the same as they are here, right? Okay. So that said, I came, went into the ninth grade and all of a sudden I'm like one of the brightest children in the group, you know? so. That was like news flash, culture shock, right? So whereas in, in TNT, I was catching my royal behind with math, algebra mm -hmm. in specific, I get mm -hmm. here and the way the teacher taught it, I understood it better. So I ended up in math honor. Okay? Wow. A math honors class. So I think it was in English honors, math honors, science honors. So, wow. Okay. <laughs> right. And that was that was interesting from, from a, a culture perspective, especially because of um, the math portion. The English understood. Um, even right. French understood because I'd had French in, in when I lived in Trinidad. I'd already had three years of French. So I came right. here and I was just whizzing through. French regions, honors, and all this kind of stuff, right? Got it. Um, but being here, being here at the age of 14 um, was a culture shock for me because I grew up in a relatively sheltered um, environment, as in, you know, I went to an all-girls school. You know, I, I went from home to school to home to church and Sunday school to back home, you know, um, 
I was told not to speak to boys unless it was <laughs> Okay. Right? And all, I mean, a, a, a list of things that I can share of how in those days children were raised and right. not given all the information, you know, so that planes brought babies and a lady with a fat okay. belly had worms. That's why her belly was fat. As so I have a question for you as far as you actually coming to America, which is known to be, you know, a country of immigrants, you know, how did that actually make you feel? And I know you said it was a culture shock besides outside of school, but even the relationships with, with dealing with other people from other places and, you know, being G1s or G2s, the first or second generation folks here, you know, how did that make you feel? Well, first of all, we used to visit, my brother and I used to visit for summer vacation. So okay. we came back in 67, and then we came back in, in 69 before coming to live in 70. And so coming here on vacation and meeting other kids on the block that we lived on who were from, you know, like down south, and then there were people from... <laughs> <laughs> from Barbados and other Caribbean countries. So that, it was interesting, but coming from a culture that is Trinidad and Tobago, where there is also such a mixture of cultures, it wasn't right. unusual to be talking to different people. I remember okay. one time um, my father had taken us to Heksha State Park of St. Mm -hmm. and I remember being on a swing and needed a push and had to figure out how to articulate it so that the girl who I saw over there could understand. And I thought, and I remembered my 10 year old self saying, um, Hey girl, can you give me a push? And it was. <laughs> That worked, and she gave me, she, you know, I got what I needed, right? <laughs> so that was, I just always had a way of fitting in and accepting people right. because, you know, it's just that we're, we're born in, in different parts of the globe, we're, we're still people. Right. right. So. Well, we only have we only have a, a total of twenty minutes. So, and I, and I know I could sit and talk to you all day. I really can. So, there are a couple other things. I know that you have a poem that you would like to share with us. So, I would like to give you the time to share the, the poem um, right now, and then we have to unfortunately wrap up. Oh my gosh! You see, we should take back our time. But okay. I know, right? Poem, <laughs> okay. The poem is called "Good Parenting," and I think this will resonate with everyone. Um, right. It's by Rodney Foster, who is from Trinidad and Tobago. So it's by a man. So when you hear me use the male term, I'm speaking Rodney's voice. And it's written in the colloquial. Okay? Right. It there are no substitute for good parenting. In my boyhood days, we had several parents. First, you had your real parents, your mother and father. And then a ton load of family, grandparents, uncles, aunts, godparents, and cousins in addition to your teachers and any adults. Any of those people could have teach you the straight and narrow path, which sometimes meant cutting your tail. Today, when I hear them talk about corporal punishment in the schools and children rights, I just want to laugh. My mother and some of them teachers would have surely make a jail if them laws was in existence then. Rampy must be just turning his grave when he hear them talking about children pushing drugs in school and bringing guns to class. Two man rat can't live in the same hall, you know. In Rampy school, it had only one man rat. That was Evans T. Rampersad. He was a model head teacher, loved, feared, and respected. I remember one day Rampy spot a fella move in after the second whistle blew. In Barataria EC, that was a cardinal sin. The rule was, once you hear that second blast, you had to freeze, stop whatever you're doing, and wait for the third, third whistle to run and line up. If you're up in the air, 
Stay there like Michael Jordan. <laughs> well, when school call, Rampy call the boy up on the stage, ring the silence bell, and start to give the boy a long speech about obeying rules and regulations and the consequences of disobeying. That was one thing with them longtime teachers and parents. They love to speechify like a midnight rubber before they bust lashing your tail. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the lecture was more painful and embarrassing than the blows itself. You used to feel like saying, all right, Rampy, cut out the set to talk and give me the two lash now. But you didn't know better. Except my cousin, Kawi. One day, Rampy was going to beat him. In front of the whole school, Rampy, pointing the rod at Kawi, say, children, there is a fool at the end of the stick. Kawi, with his smart self, ask him, which answer? Huh. Some of the teachers and the big students start to giggle. Rampy get vexed and he get Kawi four good lash on the bouncy. Kawi start to break dance one time. Hmm. Yes, man, rapping and all them kind of new dance, they really new, no? All them teachers and parents some long ago used to rap too bad. You remember your mother saying, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. How many times I have to tell you not to do that? Eh? Like broomstick breaking your ears or what? Well, if you can't hear, you go feel. Wap, wap. Oh, God, mommy, I ain't gonna do it again. Wap, wap. All the time you're dancing too bad, breaks in the blows and begging pardon. Hmm. Boy, them days were something else. Long time parents didn't spare the rod and spoil the child. No way. You think it's the Surgeon General warning that prevented me from smoking today? No, nah, man, that's too abstract. <laughs> I remember the time when I pick up a, my grandfather's cigarette butt in the yard and I went in the latrine. If you see me puffing away like a star boy you see in one of them 1230 movie, I was trying to make a smoke ring when suddenly the door fly open. <clears throat> I throw the butt in the latrine pit as my grandmother register a lash on my back. I dash out the outhouse with grandma in hot pursuit. Pelting belt that was whizzing past my ears like how some of them motorcars speed past one another on the highway. Whoosh, whoosh. And she speech is fine too, you know. You're playing chimney? Take that. Go inside and take up a book. And don't come outside until I say so. Hmm. That is a more tangible message to me than some fine print saying, cigarette smoking may be dangerous to your health. <laughs> it's them kind of parents the world needs today in the fight against the evil vices. Strong parents, loving parents, parents who are afraid their own children. Parents like the ones Bill Cosby described in one of his comedy routines. Parents who say, I brought you into this world and I ain't afraid to take you out. <laughs> yes, man. Longtime parents communicated that message loud and clear. My generation received it without interference and static. Roger, 10-4. Wow. Thank you very much. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. That was actually really great. Thank you very much for sharing. And does it so, relate um, to you? I mean, you it does know. relate to me. And, and I, I totally understand as well. So that's why, again, I just love storytelling and I love oral storytelling and I love this particular project, the G Project. So we unfortunately have to wrap up. Um, I wanna give you a couple of last minute words. I know we're working on a project together. So if you guys, we wanna just share a little bit of that, that would be really great. And then I'll do all of my little closing part. Okay, yeah, great. Um, on the 16th of August, Sunday the 16th, we are celebrating a Black Mass fundraiser, right, to raise funds for several, well, actually three, three nonprofit organizations that appeal to social justice in, in the Black community. And what JLC Productions would be doing is a fashion presentation featuring <clears throat> Samantha Garvey, um, Dimash Couture, Romero Bryan, and a surprise from the continent. Okay, That's so great. it's gonna be a quick 15 minute presentation um, with interview. 
And yeah, we're calling it the Black Star, a Pan-African look at fashion. So, and, yeah. salute to, and salute to Marcus Garvey's birthday, which is the yes. next day. Exactly. And Samantha Garvey is his granddaughter. That's and great. Some That's of great. Her films were just in, uh, uh, featured in Black is King, Beyonce's new movie. Wow. Wow. That's well, great. That's so great. So, um, um, in conjunction to my company, Mega Personalities, we're doing um, a full, full um, film series. So, there's three different. Um, um, films that we're going to be showcasing very short films within the hour. So I'll be sharing sharing that in in my my storytelling. So I'm very excited. So thank you very much for participating in the G Project. The G Project actually we have one more um, session, which is next Wednesday. So hopefully I would love to invite everybody back on Wednesday at four o'clock on uh, on IG Live, which is our G sessions, and then on Saturday, if everybody was safe, Saturday. Um, August the 22nd, we're going to be doing a whole workshop on G on the, uh, what is your G status. So we would hear more stories. we would be actually sharing uh, how other people have put the um, uh, put this together with their families. So um, I would love to invite you and your whole network to actually come. Um, if you go to our website, which is gproject.org you'll be able to register for, for the class and it'd be really great. For everybody that's listening, if you haven't liked our, um, G, our um, IG page, please like our IG page and share this and I will post or repost the interview if you happen to miss it. So I saw my friend Minky came in. So hi, Minky. And um, uh, Leah is in the room. Hey, Leah. So I'm really excited. Thank you again, Janice, for, for participating. And hopefully we'll be able to do this again. And I'll make sure that we won't get cut off twice. And we won't use this anymore. So. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Thank really. you. Yeah. All righty. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, everybody, for joining us next Wednesday at 4. All righty. Bye-bye.